So we're going to get started in the, um, like four minutes time. So we just give more people a little bit time to come in. Can you hear me, Grace? So if you can hear me, just send a message on the chat. I'm saying I'm do I don't want noise.
is um yeah I'm gonna get started quite now so good so hello everyone we're not much here so I'll just try to know you guys that are early so maybe you guys have we have some advantage over other people that will be joining us later so Grace can you just introduce yourself Hi, my name is Taonga Grace Banda. I'm from Zambia. Oh, that's cool. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure what else you want to know. Okay. Uh, I'm so, interested uh, in applying for the yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, what track are you applying for? For business. Business and entrepreneurship. Business and entrepreneurship. Yes, for okay. business and entrepreneurship. All right, that's cool. I have good friends from uh, Zambia, actually. Um, ah, awesome. You know yeah, she, I was with um, Tuwela in Northwestern. Okay. She's from Zambia and um, in 2018. So she's, she's really amazing. It's nice to meet you, Grace. Okay, Kenneth. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so can we can you introduce yourself? My name is Kenneth. I'm um, okay. uh, uh, an IT professional. And uh, basically, oh, work with uh, the various by technologies. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so you are applying for uh, business, entrepreneurship, or public management, which track? Yeah, business entrepreneurship. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So, uh, Deepal, Deepal, can you hear me? I'm not sure Deepal can hear. Uh, where is the Femi Olamide? Yes, I'm here. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, um, it's nice being here, sir. Yeah, thank you. It's nice seeing you too. So, can you quickly introduce yourself? And more people are joining us now. I have to like yeah. just can you I see just... me? Because I can... I can see you. Yeah, I can see you. We can okay. all see you. My name is uh, Femi. Ade... Okay. Okay. My name is Femi Adeboye from Nigeria. Okay, that's good. Which I'm track are you applying for? for? Um, we have a lot of business people business here. Business and entrepreneur. That's cool. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I think let's let's just quickly go ahead. Uh, 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 I will try and mute you guys so that at least we can have good uh, interaction. If you have any question right now, just put it in the chat so that uh, when I go through the chat, I can just answer the questions at the end. So during the presentation, if you have any questions, just uh, go to the chat and uh, and put the question there. So I'll be able to like answer your question. So that'll be fine. So great. So uh, as you all know, maybe most of, most of you have seen my profile already. So um, actually, I my name is Peter Ayeni. I uh, presently, I am in. Uh, Okay, I'm going to show my videos like you guys can see my face like I'm not a ghost, you know. Okay, I don't know. Okay, can you guys see me now? Let me unmute uh, Femi. Okay, yeah, that's good. Because I can't, my... This thing just froze. Oh, I can see my I can't see myself. So I was like, can you guys see me? Okay, good. So um my name is Peter and I have like over seven years experience in IT, uh basically. And uh I I've worked in, in different sectors, like I've worked in the private sector for like four years in the, in Abuja. So which is actually my first professional experience. And uh, before then, I, I after then I I resigned my job because I was just um, I was said 
I wasn't satisfied with what I was doing. I felt I could do more. So, and the organization was not giving me the kind of support I need for some kind of project I wanted to do. So I resigned my job and uh, joined the development sector. And that was actually a good thing, actually, at the end of the day, because that was when I got to know about uh, SDG, NGOs, works, and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of NGOs before in my career, but I don't really know what they do and why they do what they're doing. So because I've never worked in that space before. So I, I started out as an entrepreneur myself, uh, create my, that uh, part of my life, get a job as a very big organization where they do everything for me. And I get frustrated, I leave the job and uh, I, I started consulting for NGOs. And that was where I learned about uh, sustainable development goals and stuff like that. So that is my experience. And since then, I've been looking at, okay, how can I use technology to solve problems? And uh, that was what have actually brought me to winning Union Bank Centenary Innovation Award in 2017. I won uh, the Do School Fellowship where I was in Germany for like three months. Uh, in 2017 also, and I also won the Seed Award. I later on won the Mandela Washington Award. So a lot of things like that, uh, that we have won because I just started a simple idea of solving problem. And that is what I'm going to do today. So just like I said, the framework I'm going to give you today for applying for application does not only uh, uh work for mandela washington application no it works for everything like i'm going to give you a framework that you're going to be using to build your own personal brand tell your own personal story in such a way that any application you apply to maybe scholarship maybe conference maybe anything you're going to apply to you know how to structure your story in such a way that is compelling and is powerful enough so if you don't take anything away from this uh, conversation, one thing I want you to take away is this. You see, you can be doing big things and you're toiling and you're doing working very hard and you don't get grants and you don't get exposure and you don't get anything because you don't tell your story well. I'm telling you. I've seen a lot of people that will say that, yes, Mandela Valentin Fellowship, some of them are not even doing anything. They don't deserve it. Me, I've been doing a lot of work. Me, I've, I've done so many things. Like people, I had a lot of people say stuff like that. But the only problem they are facing is that they are not writing their story in a way that tells the magnitude of what they are doing. So if you can put your story in a way that is compelling, even if you are, I've seen someone that is a Mandela Washington fellow and have idea to... I don't know if you guys know, in Africa, yeah, in Africa, we have what we call this puff puff, you understand, as a breakfast. And he pitched it in, 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 uh, in a comp contest and she won $4,500 for that simple idea. Just because of the way she tell the story and she really she put it, and it was amazing, you understand. So it's not about how big or how small your project is, is about how compelling the story behind it, what is propelling you to do it, how you communicate your passion and your fears and everything you are putting into that work that is going to set you apart for everyone that's applying for that thing. So like I did this uh, masterclass last year in Abuja before I moved to the UK and a lot of people some of people got into Manila Washington Fellowship. Some people did not get into Manila Washington Fellowship. Some people got masters in the UK. Some people got scholarship for some other things. So those are the things, the kind of things like coming. This. So you understand what I'm trying to say? So that is uh, the concept of what we are going to be doing here. So now, what is the hero's journey? So the Euros journey is just um, a simple framework that was put together by a man called Joseph Campbell. So it's a uh, framework for storytelling that is really, really amazing. So that anyone can tell a story in a way that is powerful, that is uh, amazing and that is compelling. And one thing about this Euros journey is that it's a research work 
that Joseph Campbell did and see that every great story that has been ever told have this element of hero's journey inside them. So because you have a lot of people nowadays, like I'm a storyteller, you have to tell a story, you want to be a good social entrepreneur, or in anything you're doing, you have to be able to tell a compelling story. But what a lot of them don't give you is how do you tell a good story in the first place? So, and this is what I'm going to be breaking down for us in these uh, uh, slides on how to like tell a story in such a way that I'm, I'm coming, I'm getting something from uh, Zoom. I think I would like to like upgrade my Zoom. I don't know. Let me see. I'm going to do that if I need to maybe make some payments. I don't know. I'll do that. So uh, I don't know how much it's to know we have to like see, give me some extension. Let me see. Okay. Oh. Okay, monthly. Okay, I think I can do monthly and pay. Okay. Because I don't want us to like it's because I have a lot of people online presently. So that's why. Uh so let me just continue. I'll just upgrade as I'm talking. So now the hero story is like 12 in 12. Uh, okay, sorry. I need to see where to click on pay payments. Sorry, let me quickly continue the uh, complete the payments, please. I'll just finish it in a few minutes. I don't know they're going to give me this today. <laughs> I've used it for a lot of stuff before. Okay. Sorry, guys. Let me just do this. Okay. Oh, no. I think I. Okay. Sorry guys, let me just quickly do the upgrade so that it doesn't interrupt our session. I don't know if they're going to bring in this for me now. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Seven days I don't know that they're going to be giving me this at this time. Traffic light again. Oh man, go go. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. oh. Sorry, guys. Almost done. Oh. 
we love to use Google. I don't know, but I use uh, we don't use but. Okay. Okay. Is the time not limited for the meeting? Yeah, no, no, that's how it's three minutes. Yeah, that's why I just want to like I'm upgrading now. So I'm I just paid to upgrade. Okay. So okay. Yeah, sorry. I just need to like take a few minutes to confirm my credit card. Yeah, we could have just yeah, so we are upgraded. <laughs> okay, so good. We're fine now. Right. Yeah, so I just pick. So now uh let me just sorry, stop share. Let me reshare again. Um Zoom is actually good. I use it with Udacity, so for my mentor my mentees also, so it's amazing. Uh okay, where are we here? So now yeah, good. We're back. We have unlimited time. Yeah. So the idea is very simple. Uh, this is where we are. I told you guys like, okay. No, it's too good. Okay, good. Yeah. So I'm going to be giving you uh, the framework that actually the framework for uh, telling story using the uh, Eros journey is like I said, the Eros journey is a framework that was extracted from the principles of storytelling. And this can be found in all stories that have been ever told. Like if you look at Star Wars, if you look at uh, Harry Potter, most of the best story in the world have this element of Eros journey in them. So, and that is where Joseph Campbell's actually bring out this uh, 12 uh, framework for telling your own story. So I'm going to be giving my own personal story as I use it in, the, in my own application. So, so that you two can get the concepts on how you can tailor the user stories into your own application. So, and since we don't have much people online today, I'm going to take a lot of questions and give you feedback based on what you want and how you want to improve your application and to tailor them to you. So uh, the number one thing you have to look at is that every the first principle of the user story is the ordinary world. So the ordinary world, this is where the heroes exist before its present story begins. Now, before anyone starts out to do something great, like you want to start an, a, a, a business, you want to solve a problem, you were in the state before. That state is a state of ordinary world that is your ordinary world what were you doing before you start out to build the organization you want to build so let me give you an instance for me i told you earlier that i was working in in a press in abuja the security press is a big one and i wasn't happy with my job because that my job then was my ordinary state that is what i have i have they give me house they gave me, uh, they have driver that take me around if I want to move anywhere. They give us lunch. So it's an ordinary world. I'm comfortable. And the thing is this, if I don't leave that job, if I don't resign my job in 2015, I will never be a Mandela Washington fellow. You understand? So everything that happens in Bele Academy and everything that we have started will never be born. So that was, that is the ordinary world. So when you are telling your story, you need to be able to define to them where you are ordinarily before you get the nudge to start what you want to start. So after the ordinary world, we have the second phase, which is the call to adventure. So how do you explain it? What is the nudge that you got? What propel you? What is the, you know, like, uh, I don't want to be religious, but I could say that like, for instance, in Christianity, some pastor will tell you that God called them. Maybe sometimes they were doing the business before and they got a call and they dropped everything they were doing and answered that call and become a pastor and started preaching and doing things like that. You understand? So these things happen in the life of a lot of uh, people that have done things, great things around the world. You understand? So what is the call to adventure? 
So this phase is the hero's adventures begin when he receives a call to action. You understand? It can be a threat. It can be some people call to adventure. Can be maybe I lost my job. I lost my job. I am sitting down at home and doing nothing. You understand? And I look at okay, I can be frying akara and akamu in my house and be giving it to children that their parents are busy to not be able to cook for them in uh, in the morning and I can supply them and that's why I discovered that I can empower myself and when I see that the business is getting big I can now employ more people to do it that is a compelling story to tell you understand so another thing I notice here is I want to give you guys this don't be ashamed about your story because I was trying to review one of my uh, very close person to me application today and he wrote a statement when I read our first statement, I'm like, this is good. But everyone in the fellowship, we write the same thing you wrote. Like, okay, I'm a health, for instance, someone can say I'm a health uh, advocate. We go to uh, come in rural areas to, uh, to talk to young people, about old, old women or pregnant women about uh, um, sanitary, or about this and this and that. Anybody can tell a story like that. But that doesn't, so if I read that kind of a story, it doesn't occur to me. It doesn't give me a nudge to, okay, yeah, even me, I can wake up in the morning and go and synthesize people in the village. But there should be something more. You should be able to tell the fear. What actually propel you to do what you want to do? So it can be one line, two lines, you understand? Like for me, I was like, one of the story I tell very well is, okay, in 2015, I was frustrated with my job and I wasn't feeling good about it, you understand? So I, I felt like I can do more to benefit my society, to benefit the country by doing what? By doing more. So I resigned, even without even knowing what I'm going to do. You understand? So please, if I've not moved your mic, you can move your mic for all so that you don't distract other people. So that's an easy to get. You understand what I'm trying to say there? So after the call to action, the number three, three concept in Eros journey is the refuser of the call. Now, when you have a nudge to do something great, sometimes people refuse. You understand, you have a setback, you have the fear. So your ability to be able to communicate this fear shows that you are human and you understand the gravity of the work you want to do. Just like sometimes you hear in stories, like they said, okay, this person, you are going to become the king of this village and they wanted to meet the guy in the, in, in the other town and he was just a fisherman. And they come to tell him, oh, fisherman, sorry, we have stick to the oracle. And the oracle said, you are going to be our king. And he ran away like, no, I can't be king. I'm just a fisherman, right? You understand? So he refused the call and ran away because he's, he's, a, he's scared. You understand? So every, every time we want to do something wonderful and we say that, yes, I got this call. I'm going to change the world. I'm going to become an health advocate. But immediately the refuser comes. The refuser can be like, you first accept the fight, the town is like, no, I can't do this anymore. You understand? So like, for instance, before I resign my job to go, uh, to go and search for something else I'm going to do, I've think about it several times. You understand? Even at that time, I was like preparing to get married and I eventually resigned my job like three months to my wedding. Like that is insane. Naturally, no young man will resign his job three months to your wedding. It doesn't make sense. You understand? So it takes some courage, you understand? So being able to communicate that, that, okay, I, uh, I wanted to do this thing, but when I look at all the inconvenience, I was scared I can't do it. But later on, you get some other things that prepare you to do it. You understand? Because you do it anyway. So now the number four section is meeting the mentor. Now, you know, the number one thing is that if you remember, you have in your ordinary world, so you leave your ordinary world, you got a call. When you got the call, you refuse that call. And the fourth one, you meet a mentor. Now, what is the, the place of a mentor in your story or in your application is to show what inspire you 
to be able to overcome that refusal. You understand? What is the thing that inspires you? So a mentor may be a person, a figure. Sorry, guys, that's my son. What is it? It's okay, it's okay. No, I'm in a meeting right now. So just sit down there. Yeah. So now the mentor is that figure, is that thing that inspires you to go against all odds to do what you want to do. So in writing your application to be able to write a complete story, what inspire you to do what you're doing right now? You understand? What are the people that have been doing what you are doing that have inspired you to go further? I'll give you another of my own personal story that, that really helped me a lot. Okay, when, uh, when I was in high school, and uh, is it in high school? No, when I was in primary school, in class three to be precise. So I, I was in school and uh, one on a Friday afternoon after school, somebody came to pick me up on the assembly ground. And uh, when I got home, I discovered that two of my siblings have been knocked down by a runaway car. Justin, please don't make noise. I'll look for it for you later. Hmm? So I discovered that three of my, uh, two of my, siblings have been knocked down by car driver and they, they died and that event actually affected my mom so my mom wasn't able to come out of it on time and she lost her business and everything and i was going to a private school definitely but after that i, I had to move from private school to a public school and that was a very devastating experience for me i lost interest in education and everything so that was a day i was in gs3 I just go to school for going sake. I wasn't really communicating, though I was very brilliant in primary school. And I met this guy, uh, he's a year my senior. And after collecting our report card at the end of the term, normally I had like horrible results every year. So I saw this guy had nine distinction. So I was really inspired and I was like, wow, if this guy can actually add nine distinction in the public school, why can't I do it? And that actually motivated me. And I started uh, taking my education seriously. So that is a kind of uh, inspiration. So inspiration can come from anywhere. It can be a mentor that you have one-on-one. -on -one. It can be someone that you talk to. It can be someone that, uh, that inspires you to do things. It can be even a book you read. It can be a book that you read and everything like that that inspire you to do your work. So now you are relating your fears, you are relating uh, the call, the passion that you have and why you have to go out to do it. And in that story also, you, give, you tell them, okay, this is the person, these are the things that I saw that really inspired me to do this and this and that. And you can be able to uh, move that into your, into your story also. So finally, uh, we talked about the crossing the threshold. When you meet your mentor, now you are inspired. You're like, wow. So there is someone in this school that got nine distinctions. Why can't I do it? You understand? Like Bill Gates gave out $50 billion and I'm earning 100,000. Can I, can I give out 10,000? You understand? So all you say the lady that uh, uh, go to New York to deliver a talk to the climate change summit and it went on, she went on the boat and she's a young girl. You're like, wow, that is inspiring. So seeing what she did, I felt like, wow, if she can do it, why can't I do it also? You understand? It communicates something that inspire you to be able to achieve what you want to achieve and what you're trying to do. And that is crossing the threshold. So crossing the threshold is now is that you have jumped out. I have resigned my job now to go into the development sector. I've resigned my job to go and start a business that I don't even know what's going to happen. But at least you have taken that step. That is crossing the threshold. So when you cross that threshold, immediately you come to a new environment, what are you going to have? You are going to have tests, you are going to have challenges, you are going to make new friends, you are going to make new enemies. And that is what it's all about. And you have to communicate these challenges also. And all these things I'm talking about are things that they are going to ask in different aspects of the essays that you're going to write. So why I'm saying this is that you should make your story in such a way that it's coherent and everything flows with each other. 
So what challenges that you have, what are the, what are the allies? What are the people that supported you? You understand when you want to do what you're doing? What are the people that give you the courage? Who are the people that nudge you on that? Okay, you can do it. Who are the people that share you on? You understand? So that is the allies that you're going to have. Obstacles are the enemies. You understand? So because you're going to a new business of, uh, let's say, water packaging, and uh, you feel if you do water packaging in a way, you're going to make water available to a lot of people. So what are the challenges that you face that you did not know before? You understand? And these challenges can, like, come in any form. So you'll be able to, like, communicate those challenges in a more interesting way. So now the, the third section is approach the Emo's cave. So the Emo's cave may represent many things in the hero story, such as an actual location in which lies a terrible danger. You know, when you meet allies, you meet enemies, there are going to be a lot of challenges that are going to come your way. So what are those challenges that you face in your work presently? What are the things that you are most fearful of? And don't be scared to communicate your own unique story, your own unique challenges in your application. Because everybody's going to write, we go out, we do this, we do that, we do this. But what is the challenge? Okay, we want to go and do advocacy in this particular uh, neighborhood. And we, on our way, we found that the roads are very bad and everything. So paint that mental picture of the challenge you face on the road to get into that place. So that when the person is reading their application, they will look at, okay, wow. So this person is going to this village. There is no light. There is no electricity. There is bad road. Even our car broke down on the road or things like that. I'm just giving an example of what is going to give your story more authenticity than just what everybody will be right naturally. You understand? Because we are writing from the fact that you are the one that experienced that pain. Nobody experienced the pain like you do. So you need to like explain those things for them. So another thing we have is the supreme ordeal. So these are like the most dangerous physical tests that the hero face. So these are all challenges. So why you should communicate your challenges and is that it is a test of character. Is what keep you in the job. Even when you don't have grants, when you don't have enough money to do anything, even when you have 1,000 Naira or 1,000 um, Sefas or something in, in your pocket, you still keep on going, you understand? So you need to like communicate all those fears, all those times that you have to sacrifice money from your salary, all those times you have to give things in a way that, so you, can, you may think that these things are very small and very minute, but they really, really, really count. And that is what is going to set you apart from thousands of people that are going to be, uh, sending in their application. So now the next thing is the reward. You know, after every challenges, after facing every enemies, after all these obstacles, you did not quit. So you are not, you did not quit. That is why you're still doing what you're doing right now. So what comes when you persevere is a reward. Now, your story is not complete. Your application is not complete. If you don't give all those rewards that you got, what is the reward that you get? The impact you make in the life of people. I use outreach and advocacy as an example because it's easy to mention. How many people directly you impact? And what people don't get sometimes is that how many people do you indirectly impact also? You understand? So you're saying like, uh, we reach up to uh, five communities. Five communities. How big is the communities? You understand? You have to like put numbers together. So like if I send a message, just in place, if I send a message on Facebook, for instance, and 10 of my friends sees it, just in place, I said, say I'm talking, please. So, and 10 people see it. So those 10 people mean as a ripple effect. It means that that 10 people, maybe five of them, we also tell another five people, which we tell other five people. So if you find a way of really saying that, okay, you estimate that we're able to reach this community of a population of how many thousand people. If you don't know the population of the community that you go to, go on Google, Google map or population statistics and everything, go and check. 
like okay this community we went to have this number of people there and we reach up to this number of people so don't sell yourself small you understand so get the numbers online and put the numbers together and show them that yes the work you do make a huge impact you understand in the life of people of that particular community that you are serving you understand it doesn't have to be in millions but you just have to show that the impact is tangible you understand and you can even even when you are talking about your reward your impact you can talk about your impact in your uh user's perspective like for instance we went to a community and we met a young lady called uh, aisha after our synthetization program aisha went that is a single mom went on to take his own life his own destiny uh, uh, destiny in her own ends and enroll go back to school and today aisha has just finished his work or have just done this or that and that so when you tell it in that user's perspective you are giving yourself more authenticity because you are sh showing empathy you are showing that okay this one work we have done so aside from meeting thousands of people but this one person as a case study that we can tell the story that the impact of our work have made meaningful things in their life you understand so single out a situation single out one person one user story that you can connect your idea your business to that your business is going to change their life or have already changed their life in one way or the other so so after that we have uh, what we call the road back so you as a you uh, as an as an hero you started from uh you got a call you refuse the call you meet your mentor you face enemies you face challenges you go to reward so now you're going to get the same journey back to where you're coming from because it's just like a circle like i said so now you get the journey back and you just uh, you get what we call uh resurrection so resurrection is just that uh i was speaking to one of my partner and she said to me that one of their beneficiary called her you understand and uh because they were able to save this life of their and their daughter and they were appreciative you know, they were so happy about it so they called her and she felt like she felt so happy about it you understand you know more you think that you're going to enjoy more as a social entrepreneur as a civic organization a public servant is not the money it's not the salary it's not the big grant it's not going to the u.s it's the impact and the testimony of the people that your work is serving you understand so those are the new lights like new thing that you're going to get so those are like the height of your achievement you understand getting money love opportunity and fellowship is good yeah it makes you feel wonderful about yourself but also when you get uh, your customers, people that are using your services, people that, that you save through your NGOs or you improve their life. So when they speak to you, when they talk to you, uh, well, they, they send in their, their testimony, you become very happy. So another thing is that return with the Alexa. So this is the final stage of the Euro journey. So this is when you get the bigger reward, you get a bigger picture of, uh, of everything like i've uh we have done a lot of things we reach out to millions of people so you've become a new person you got a reward you got an enlightenment you understand so your state have been changed and transformed from other people now you are not like a mentor to others and people want to like okay we want to be like bill gates we want to be like oh uh, uh this person and um, Leslie mandela because all of them have walked through their own hero's journey and they have returned with Alexa and everybody wants to copy them. And that is exactly what Erogen is all about. And that is exactly what every application, every fellowship is trying to do. They select people that are heroes and they showcase them to the world so that every other people that are coming behind are going to be like them. So like for instance, every one of you applying for Manila Washington Fellowship, you are already a leader in one way or the other. So that is why Mandela fellow, Fellows, uh, they are looking for people that are leaders, you understand, that can inspire other leaders 
to become leaders. You understand? So, and that is what your story will do. Because when you get to the US, when you were selected, you are going to be talking to other people. You are going to be writing, um, they are going to write blogs about you. They are going to feature you on a podcast. They are going to like interview you and everything. So at that stage, what are you going to be saying? You understand? Just think about it. So that is where these stories come from. So everything my love worship application and every other fellowship you are going to be applying for, what they are looking for is people with story that are inspiring so that you also can share that in stories with other people and inspire them to do more. You understand? So I was privileged to be interviewed in the U.S. and I also uh, talked uh, about a podcast on Nigerian youth and how youth in Africa are ready to take leadership. So why I was selected for that is because of the work I did and it's because of my own personal story in which I take a bigger risk of leaving my own comfort zone. So getting into a state that I don't even know anything about and I was able to come up with an idea and also help in some other things, you understand? So you can tell your story from all your experiences that you have had that gets you to where you are right now. So don't let your story just be around your idea and business alone because you are not in isolation of your surroundings. You understand? Everything that allow you to be where you are today have helped you. All the journey, all the people you have met, organization you have worked with and everything. So everything comes together to make you a Mandela Fellow or to make you who you are going to be. So uh, before we go to questions, I'll go to the chat. Uh, I just want to like give you just in place an overview of the statistics of Mandela Washington application and I'm going to give you some insights in general insight also so you can now, I'll now look at the question and I can answer. Uh, Mandela Washington Fellowship is like in about 49 countries so people all around the world like I think in 2018 they had about this 70 something thousand i'm not sure and i know it's a lot and about uh 11 000 from nigeria so it's really really big so and all these things for the space of 700 fellows and every one of you deserve it but they are going to look at a lot of things to do the selection so that's why i saw that there are a lot of business people here you see that business actually take like high percentage in in selection because they are looking for a way to actually uh, create more jobs, employment opportunities for people and things like that. So people that are doing business, I think have NGOs also have a lot of high percentage and then public uh, people. So in Nigeria, we had like 60 people were selected in 2018. So from about uh, 11,000 applications. So it's really, really huge. So what I would say is that let your story be unique. Don't be scared to write uh, things that you have been through that have been your own true story because your own true story is going to be different from every other person and that's going to make you unique so some people like don't be shy of your story if you tell it it's your story nobody's going to take you away from me from you you understand so some people are like shy like i don't want to tell about my story i don't want people to know that i've gone through this or that no failure is ba is part of success so even if you write your application, I don't even see anywhere you have failed before. I don't see things that you have like, is this real? Because in real world, people make mistakes, people fail and uh, become better because failure makes you better, right? So you share your failures and you share your more of your successes also. So that they can know that, okay, you have faced challenges and you have overcome them and you have what it takes to actually be a leader. You understand? You have the tenacity, you have the grit, you have the recent, um, things to, to go about there. And another thing I would say is that before the question, please don't lie. Don't copy other people's applications. Don't send someone to send you their application and you copy the way they write it. Because your own story and your own experience is going to be unique for you. You understand? So let your story be unique. Tell it your truth. You understand? And be proud of it. So even though you don't get into Mandela application, there are a lot of other fellowships out there that you get to, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't try because if you don't try, you cannot even get it in the first place. You understand? So another thing is that they're not worried about your English or grammar. 
that is one thing that a lot of people like maybe it's because the way i write my grammar i actually wrote my own manila questions application when i was in germany and i wrote it uh like in, on the seat and sent it because i was very very busy during that period so i just had like take a time out and do it and send you understand so and when i rewrite my application there were a lot of grammatical errors there so it's not about a perfect application no errors or anything no they don't look looking at that so they're looking at your genuity your stories your impact your leadership skills your empathy you understand all those features and all those things comes out in the way you present yourself in the story that you tell you understand so um i'm going to look at the charts okay so let me just go up a little bit okay yeah so recording of this you are going to get it actually i'm, I'm going to send a video across uh to everyone's email so you can have an overview of all of this so you're going to get the recording of this definitely so please try to touch on the criteria for the sectors that are giving priority i'm into agriculture and agribusiness okay so now uh sectors that are giving priorities is for me i'll say that they try to like balance everything i'm not sure that a sector is giving priority more than the other mm, not sure but the thing is that what i've seen during my own uh fellowship we have more people according to the statistics from mandela they have more people in education in health sector I had to be in agriculture and uh, some people in climate, climate change kind of work. And these are the big areas that, uh, that, have, uh, that people were selected more. You understand? But that doesn't mean that you can't be selected more when you are working in other areas. You understand? So it just depends on your work and how you are able to make your case. So the thing is that you write your application like i deserve to be in this fellowship because i've worked for it i've worked for it i have an impact i need my voice to be heard you understand so and another thing is that the use of social media is very very wonderful like if you have your organization and you, are, you don't have any social media presence go and create one now create a social media page facebook page create a instagram and twitter account for your organization for god's sake because now, if you write your application and everything, if I want to just go and Google your organization name, I want to check what you have done, and I saw nothing, you know, that doesn't like make, it doesn't give you some kind of credibility. Even if you have 20 likes on your Facebook page, but I know that yes, you existed and you are there and you are doing something. So be active on social media, put your work out there. So use social media a lot because the, the people check those things out. Even people marking your application, they can be looking at your application like okay let me go and see this person and they check and they see nothing I'm like maybe he's lying maybe he's just made up you understand know, like that so just give yourself some credibility by doing stuff okay yeah maybe we can try uh google uh i don't have to like pay 14 pounds like for zoom but i think it's, it's not bad actually for this so uh okay another question here I went down to the professorship part. I have a good story on TV world. I just finished my master's now, but I haven't yet started implementing policies. Okay, so uh, Grace, the fact that you have not time making direct impact, but you have an idea. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. So like when I started, uh, sorry, in, uh, in Bailey, when I got into Mandela Washington Fellowship, we have not actually launched the product itself. It's still at the idea stage. You understand? So what you should be able to capture is what will be the impact of your project. You understand? So capture the impact of your project and why your solution is needed now. You understand? So sell that to them. You should apply. There's no reason why you shouldn't apply. You understand? So we have a lot of people that all their business are seen idea stage. 
So the fact that you are in idea state doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply. So it's the more reason why you should apply. So the thing is that we, we are in idea stage, but we have presence online. So, but we are still building, but we are building up, we have a landing page, you understand, telling people that, okay, this is in Billy, this is what we want to achieve, this is what we want to do, people can sign up. And this is our idea of what you are doing. And we are applying for and grants and competitions and stuff like that. So, so what do you feel is the most important things you gain from the fellowship and how have you implemented it in your business? Oh, uh, you see, the thing is that there are a lot of things you are going to gain from, from the fellowship. Number one important thing for me, I think is the connection and the network I have with a lot of people. Like I said, when you talk like you are from Zambia, I told you I have friends from Zambia. You understand? So that's, um, that is priceless in itself. So if I'm going to Zambia now, I have someone that I'm meeting in Zambia. I have like even three people from Zambia that I mean, Donna, Donna is my very good friend, very close friend of mine. She's in Zambia also. I have friends in Ghana, Kenya. Yeah, for, okay, I'll be with you soon. So I have friends in Zambia, like I have friends that have implemented projects for me in Kenya without me even getting going there. You understand? So that is one thing you're going to, to gain. Aside from that, it's a credibility for you also. You understand? So like today I had a, uh, a job interview today and uh, in my CV, I just put Mandela Washington Fellowship there. And the interviewer was asking me, okay, I should tell him more about the Mandela Washington Fellowship and stuff what we did. And you know, it was amazing. It gives you, even outside the country, wherever you are, it gives you some kind of credibility that yes, you are a leader, you can lead a team, you can do a lot of things and stuff like that. So. So uh, based on the explanation you gave, you have given, are there chances of interviewers that are just starting out in their community? That's what I'm saying. There are chances for you if you are just starting out. The stories and the reward you are showing and the impact, it doesn't have to be what you have gained. It can be what you promise to give. You understand? So what are the things that you promise to give? So I'm not very active in social media, but I have had great impact with the new product development that have been recognized globally with media coverage. And so I can I have links in my application. Yes, there is place for additional documents. So you can add your links there. You can add your stories that have been talked about you. You can do screen grab of the mention of the story website and upload it there so that you can see that you have done those work. So, which is very, very important. So, uh, yeah, social media is free. You can have a LinkedIn account where you put all your things. So when you Google your name, your LinkedIn will show up, your Facebook will show up, and everything. And at this moment, this is not the moment that you start to post politics and jokes on your social media. You understand? Post things that are meaningful, things that are inspiring, things that are cool. You understand? So that when people check your account, they don't go there and be seeing BBN Nigeria, uh, Brick Brother House, things that doesn't makes sense you understand so as a leader like you portray yourself as one because you are going to be an ambassador for the u.s uh, and your like on your country where you are so you have to like communicate things that that make sense you understand so you want to make your facebook a fun place just have a facebook page or you just lock your facebook and make it private you understand so like for me for instance uh my facebook is very is not as formal is a little bit informal so i make it private so that when you google my facebook and you go to my facebook you will not be able to see some of the things i posted so you can just see my profile but all of my social media instagram linkedin twitter they are all very uh, uh, formal so but my facebook i just because i have pages so but i want my facebook to be fun at least sometimes you want to make jokes you want to play with your friends so you can just make set your facebook to private so that people don't go and see that you abuse uh, something in 2019 or you abuse somebody and they will not use that against you. You understand? So there is no point if you don't have fun on social media, but just be very, very sensitive with the information you put, especially in this moment of applications that people will be checking out your profile based on what you have written and stuff like that. You understand? So uh, that's that. So is there any other question that we have? So I'm going to be unmuting you guys now. So do we have? Ah, uh, yes, I have one more question. Okay, go ahead. So, like I mentioned, I've just finished my master's. So I don't have um, 
professional achievements in the last year, but I have academic achievements. So, because there's one question that specifically asks for professional achievements in the last 12 months. Okay. So, what is your master's? Do you count your master's as a professional experience, a, a, a accomplishment? I think so. It's a master's in innovation and entrepreneurship. That's perfect. Yeah. Not everyone has masters in the last 12 years. Like I don't have masters in the last 12 years. So you beat me to that. Like in the last 12 months, I don't have masters. You understand? So okay. that's so I can that's, use it. Yeah, that's an achievement. So why did you took that courage to go for your masters? Do you understand? So yeah. that's how you sell yourself. Okay. So I decided to go for my masters because I believe the masters will enable me to be able to do more, 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 and more, more. You understand? Yeah. So the thing is that it's about how you call it. You understand? Just like I put it to you. If you think your master's degree is not a professional achievement, it's not. But if you convince them that it's a, an achievement, and it, you understand? So that is how you, it works. So it's about what you call it and how you put it to them. You understand? Okay, maybe I've been struggling to further my education or I've been limited to make social impact because Jason is because I don't have masters but now in the last um, 12 months I've achieved my masters and these have empowered me to be able to pursue this and this and that and you give them those stories in a way that they'll be like even they'll be like wow make the masters a big deal you understand so you tell it in a very big way thank you you're welcome Grace. so any other person peace peace is just there do you want to ask the question? Peace, can you hear me? Can you unmute? Okay. I want to. <clears throat> can I ask a question? Yeah, go on, Kenneth. Uh, I want to know the duration of the application because um, there was a time I actually lost interest in this month. There was a fellowship. I applied for the very first one because. I've been into a lot of humanitarian projects, uh, a lot of them in my community, even in the present place where I am right now. And I tend to feel all that in my story. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the application was not accepted. Since then, they even sent me several mails <laughs> that uh, I should apply for 2017, 18. I didn't. I wasn't <laughs> Okay, so uh, Kenneth, how, how many times have you applied now? Just once. That's it. I've applied just once. Only once. That's it. You applied just once. So now the thing is that you, you are the one that sells yourself short because you applied once. So now my colleague here, uh, Lamy Day Johnson, let me show you guys. Here. This is the present president of uh, Mandela Washington Fellowship in Nigeria chapter. We were in Kellogg wow. together, Northwestern University in Chicago. So he applied how many times? Should I tell you how many times he applied? Yes, I'm listening. Four times. Four. Four times he applied. Serious? Yes, four times okay. he applied. So the thing is that the fact that you applied now and you didn't get doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply again. Like, and aside from that, have you applied to other fellowship also aside from Mandela Fellowship? Yes, I applied for Atlas Corporation. Okay. Atlas Corp. And um, uh, I made it to the second round, second stage. After which, I, I was not actually selected. That's very so. That is a progress. You understand. So the fact that you got on, like for me, I've applied, did I apply for Atlas Corps? Okay, no, I did not. It was my wife that applied for it. And she didn't even get to any stage. You understand? And the last time, again, she applied for some other things. She got a full sponsored scholarship, the uh, master. You understand? So sometimes it's not just about this one thing. Why I had to encourage people that I mentor, like don't give up on yourself. There's 1,001 applications and opportunities out there. You understand? And the application does not cost you anything. 
it just cost you 30 minutes of sitting down and sent your application and look at what happens. You understand? So yeah. what I'm going to do is that just look at everything I've discussed with you today. Go and look at your application yeah. again. Tell your pain points of your story. Tell the story. Tell the thing that is painful to that people that you are solving the problem for. Tell it raw as it is. So they okay. can know that this is how the problem is. And tell them why your solution is important and why what you are doing is very, very critical. Tell them your fears. Tell them your your um, what you have won, your, your rewards, your impact you have made. Take them out. Put your documentation behind it. You understand? Yeah. It doesn't cost anybody, anyone. You understand? Yes. Last one year, I've, I've stopped applying for anything because I, I've been busy and spend more time with my son now and everything. So, but the thing is that when you understand how these things work, there's rarely what you apply for that you won't get. Like for instance, I, I one young world is for people between 25 to 30, you understand? And I've passed that age. Yeah. I'm 31 now. And I applied for it anyway. And I was selected. You understand? I didn't even take it seriously. I just copied some application I've used before and just dump and just submit. You understand? So sometimes when you look at eligibility and everything, you're just like, oh, I cannot do this thing. And you just cancel yourself out, which is not very, very good. So the thing is that take the chance. Like application is free, right? So don't say because mm -hmm. I was discouraged, didn't pick me okay. this year, I would not know. Try again when you feel that is even what will show your resilience as a leader. Because a leader, you don't give up. Like, because of this thing happened, I just give up and I'm not going to do it any longer. No. We keep on doing it until we get the results. You have put a lot of work into your community. So you should get rewarded for it. You yeah. understand? So, okay. Thank you. Femi, okay. Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you, Femi. Okay, so um, you mentioned something about... Uh, even if you've not started, or if you, you have it in mind, or you have the zeal to impact the people's life. Like me, for instance, um, I've seen the uh, Mandela Fellowship um, program, and I've actually uh, had the opportunity to um, be at the meeting where you um, were a speaker at okay. the Kakintayos program in, um, in Lorraine. That's good. I don't know if you still remember. Yeah. It's, so um, I've always had this um, still of um, in life because um, we are village uh, or not um, rosy side of life. So um, growing up this self. Yeah, so what, what I'm going to say, yeah. yeah. Hello, Femi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So just, uh, I get what you're trying to say. So for me, what I'm going to say is this. Just like I've said before, for everyone, there is no point you shoot yourself in the leg by yourself. So don't cut yourself out because you've met a lot of fellows, they have done big things. Let me tell you something, the reality is that I've met a lot of fellows that have not really done any big thing. You understand? So that I'm saying that it's just because, 
on how you tell your own story. So most of the fellows that you have, 90% of them are just like promises. You know what we call promise? You promise that I have this idea and it's going to do this and this and that. So that's what they call it. It's for emerging leaders. It's not really for people that have win everything in the world, but it's for people that have, have the king, you have the interest, you have the, even some people like, what they have just done is just volunteering works right and there and everything. You understand? So that's, that's just it. So, and the fact that you have an idea you want to do, you don't have the support yet, doesn't mean that you shouldn't try. So look at organization around you that you can partner with to do something. You understand? It doesn't have to be big. So you can create events, you can do sensitization, you can do things uh, no matter how small as it is. Not like the event I was like in the learning, you can see how small that is. You just partner with the people there and everything and you get things done. So you can partner with the orb, with someone that has something, or you two, three people come together, put your resources together and you, you do something for your community. So it doesn't have to be big and out of the world, no. It doesn't have to be. Um, get um, okay. I don't know if we can get. Don't uh, you say we should not copy someone else's um, application? But um, for personally, I have not applied for this Mandela Fellowship before or any um, fellowship programs or scholarship programs. So I don't know if we can get something um, like a guideline or an overview of how the application form looks well, like well, 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 well. also how to prepare ourselves to um, fit in those um, um, applications. Okay, yeah. Um, this, is what, this is what I'm going to say. If you go to the Mandela Washington website itself, they have a lot of insights, templates, and how to structure your application and things like that. So, which is cool. So, and the thing is that, why I don't give people templates to use, or I just give you framework and guidelines to just stimulate your mind, is because these people that are marking application, they see a lot of applications. So when they see patterns, they know that this is like what is the same thing, you understand? So just try to be genuine and come up with something from you. The same thing is 150 words. Write it more than 50 words and submit to them. Understand? Don't worry yourself too much about how it's going to turn out or not. You understand? That is not like, it's not your business in any way. You understand? So just try, just do what you need to do. You understand? Don't be worried about, uh, I need to like, what is the guideline? How will people write it or something like that? No, you don't need to worry about that. But if you are looking for templates and guidelines and things like that, I can share some link. I will send it to everyone in an email and you'll be able to see some of the insights and how to some of those things. But most importantly, is just write your own story, write your own truth, write the things that you have done. And you see that it's, it's, it's going to come out well. Mm. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any question? If we think of questions, is it yeah, possible? Hello. Yeah, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Number deep. 10 um, points. Wait, Femi, please. Uh, Deepo, right? Okay. I can hear you. Yeah, Deepo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good evening, ho, ho. Thanks for the platform. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, my question is simple. Can I contact you before I submit my application? If I put it in a draft and just wait for review, just yeah. wait to review. Yeah, actually, what I said is that I do actually want to review people's application this year uh, because of I. But what I'm going to do is that uh, for the six people here right now, I'm just going to give you that um, waiver. So and uh, I review your applications. So before thank you, you so much. So. Uh, for the six of you here, I'm going to give you, Thank you. Uh, that. And uh, 
because of that, I'm going to just send my e an email that is not like a lot of people will not have that, so that I will know that it's you guys. And it's six, and it's maybe five guys here. So if it's more than this, I'll know that somebody else know. Do I remember all of your names anyway? So, so I'll just put <laughs> this in the chat for everyone. So. So just send your application there. So send it there. Can I proceed? And uh, I'll, I'll be able to review and give you feedback. So because you guys stay uh, for the last thing, I think we would like enjoy that. So that is good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, Deep One. You're welcome. So, uh, are there any other questions? No covered. Nothing. I think you guys are good. Yeah. So, so what I'll just say is that I wish you guys all, all the best. The fellowship is quite a wonderful experience. Like you can't explain it. But then, it's amazing. You saying something, Deepo? So, you said what? Okay, I thought you were saying something. Yeah, I think it's Femi that is speaking, not me. Okay, okay, good. So what I'm trying to say is that the, the fellowship is actually a fantastic experience for me. So most of the pictures I show in this slide is, is from the fellowship. Uh, from this our hostel, so where we are, it's really amazing, oh, fun. And yeah, so it's really, really great. So this is in the bus. So we met this woman, and she's an amazing woman. She has been like a part of our family in the bus. And she became friends with all of the fellows. And she gave us lots of gifts. So she's like a friend from, she comes from our dinners. She comes to our house to eat and things like that. So we take pictures with her. She's like a grandma for, for the fellows in, in Chicago. She's amazing. So this is me and Lamide in, in Kellogg building. So these are hostels. So just like, just like that. And, uh, this is uh, one of the people that work at the university. She's a volunteer. She's actually in Nigeria, but her dad is in Nigeria. Her mom is white. So after our graduation night, so we took this. So this is at the airport when we were going to DC. So everybody was just exhausted. Like it's very, very exhausting also because you go to class from morning to evening. And from there you go to sightseeing, like, go from Everton to Chicago every now and there. So it's really, really, really exciting. So, and sometimes we have time for fun. This is when we go to watch Man City and Dortmund in, in, in Chicago. And nice. Really amazing. So it's, so this in DC, the final day when we all had our certificate and it was quite intriguing. So a lot of people were crying here after this event. It was really emotional and, like really amazing i tell you so that's so i want you guys to like uh take advantage of it so I have, and I have uh, question, sir. okay uh femi last question before we go okay okay sir the number 10 points number 10 and number 11. okay yes i want you to come over it again and also um um, there was a point you stated that um, talking about the um, um, reward or tracking it back to how it all began, yeah, or something like that. Yes, um, for for starters, like I asked before, that I've not done anything. I don't know how. One thing that for starters, your reward is a promise. Every startup, what startup is promise? We promise that we have this technology that is going to do this and this and that. You understand? So that promise is what you are going to tell and give it to them as okay, if this is the problem right now, the cost of Gary is 20 naira. But now we have this technology. If this technology is implemented, 
the cost of Gary will be reduced to five naira. You understand? That is the reward. That is your reward. That is the prom that is the promise that you are giving them. And that is the reward. You understand? That's what you're going to gain. Okay. So your own journey and everything is that okay, why are you working on this idea? What propel you? What inspire you to work on it? What are the challenges that you have faced working on the idea? You understand? So how far have you stretched yourself? What are the number of people that you think that this idea are going to impact? You understand? So those are the things that you put together to create your own story. But even now that you are coming up with this idea, what have you done in the past before? In your secondary school, in your primary school, what are what have you collected? Are you a senior prefect? Are you an ed boy? Are you a class captain? So people don't remember that all these things count also. I'm a class governor. I'm a student union leader. I mean, this thing, all these things count. So you can put all those experience, your past experience, and use to tell that story also. You understand what I'm saying now? Yes. Okay, good. So just do it that way. Okay, so I think uh, that's that's fine. We we have uh, P. She's not talking. I don't know why. I'm not sure if she's there or not. No problem. So, uh, Grace, spare me, this ball, and this person is number. I don't know with peace. So, thank you guys for staying back, and uh, that's amazing. So, I'll be looking forward, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've given a lot of very good information. Thank you so so much. God bless you. No, yeah, well, God bless you. Also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sir. One, one more. One more word. <laughs> One more, please. Um, the um, you mentioned um, um, like the other man that asked the question was talking about being into agriculture and um, and stuff. So we that we are applying for the business and entrepreneurship. What um, I don't really understand. Are we um, pitching a proposal in the business aspects or? You know about my love Washington fellowship is that you know what they want you to do is that what track do you see best fit what you are doing? They change track. They can change you what you read your application. Well, like you should be in civic. They will change you to civic. And if you apply for, they can they can put you on any track they want. So, so I just want you to choose the best thing for yourself. But that doesn't mean that they can't change you. So if you go to interview. And I feel like, okay, this your idea is good for NGO. They will put you on NGO track. So just to put your own idea, your digital skills and things you have done. So just select the preferences you think you want. But when you get in and later on, they can change you. So it doesn't matter. Don't worry yourself too much about that. They can have people that apply as a business and they put them in civic. And I have people that apply in civic and they put them on business. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. All right, sir. No problem. Okay, right, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye bye. Share. Good night. Yeah. Good night, Thank everyone. you. I hope we we'll get the video. Yeah, the sure. video recording. I will. Right. Right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.